Your father was an exceptional man, although he made mistakes. But as we know, we all make mistakes. Even though he acted against your will, I can assure you he was forced to, and he suffered as a result. The letter shows Salvador Diaz Palencia to be an intelligent, open-minded, and in addition, a very well-meaning, benevolent man. If you remember your father in that light, you can only be proud of him. Oh, you are talking so kindly of him, Professor. Maybe you are right. But you know, it is so strange to learn these details about the man I knew better than anyone. I don't doubt that. You did not suspect the existence of the secret group at all? No. Of course I knew that the three of them were good friends and liked to talk. Usually they came here, to my father's room. They locked the door, and the lights were on until the morning. The strangest of all was when I once peered in through the window, because I was curious, and I didn't see anyone in the room. They were all gone. Gone? That's interesting. They must have left the house for a short time. Yes, that could of course be. But why would they walk the streets of Toledo by night? And there is another locked door in your father's room. Where does that lead? Oh, that one. That's my father's photo laboratory. A dark little room. I doubt that there is room for three men to stand there comfortably, let alone spend hours in that airless room. The room doesn't even have a window. Hmm. Mysterious. Would you allow me, Miss Diaz Palencia, to examine the room that was used as a photo laboratory? Of course, Professor. I only keep it locked because I am a little afraid of the chemicals in there. Here is the key. Another lock. This time I suspect it is some date, an important date. Let's think. Excuse me, I don't remember you mentioning when Mr. Diaz Palencia died. Last year, the end of May. It was a cloudy spring. Please don't take it disrespectfully, but it would be important for me to know the date of your birth. Oh, Professor, how could you offend me with such a question? I was born on the 4th of September, 1883. Good morning, officer. My name is Professor Samuel Hunt, a researcher from the British Museum. I would need some information. Well, a foreigner. Good morning, uh, professor. What is a professor doing here? Do you have somewhere to stay? You can just walk around here in the street. I know a hotel. I came to visit an old acquaintance. I'm staying with my friend. I am housed comfortably, thank you. Old oh, acquaintance. Hmm. But I bet I haven't seen you here about. That is correct. I know this person from England. <laughs> this must be Salvador, the painter. But he's dead. Are you joking with me? 
His daughter was so kind as to host me. But do not worry, I only intend to stay for a few days. I see. But still, if you needed it, I know a good hotel. My nephew is the... Thank you, officer. No. But would you answer a few questions of mine? Of course. That is, it depends on what you are interested in. I am looking for a certain young man by the name of Francisco Candelas. Francisco? You see, it's not the best time. He is sitting over there. It wasn't easy to catch him because he resisted strongly. But I grabbed him hard by his shirt and brought the villain in here to steal from that good Mr. Alonso. He stole an ornamental sword worth a fortune, did you know? Yes, I've heard about it. And I've also heard that the sword is still missing and that the boy is innocent. Uh-huh. Word travels fast, huh? Well, that sword really hasn't been found. Not yet. But I'll get it. I'll find it, since I'm concentrating all my efforts on it, as you can see. But the idea that the Francisco kid is innocent, <laughs> it would be difficult to prove. It was his grandfather's sword. He wanted to get it back. Blatantly obvious. He worked at Mr. Alonso's house every single day. He planned it out, and then he stole it. That's all. Mr. Alonso testified against him, and he's a clever man, a greatly respected man, whose influence reaches everywhere. This blacksmith's assistant is in deep trouble. And have you any other proof, uh, Mr. Reoyos? Officer Reoyos. Proof? There is proof. But I mustn't discuss this with a stranger. A police officer must be able to keep things confidential. I can say, however, that Mr. Alonso's testimony will be the most decisive proof before all courts. Yes, yes, this must be so. Why do you think that the sword has not been found? Have you any idea where it could be? Where it could be? How should I know? But we will find it. That boy must know where it is. And if he won't tell me, my colleagues in Madrid will get him to talk. Don't you worry about it. Sergeant, would you allow me to have a few words with that straying lad? No way, Professor. You have no permission. But who could give such permission? Me, of course. Well, really? Then I'd like to have your permission to talk to the young Candelas. I can't. I would need an order from a higher authority. You're not saying that only your colleagues in Madrid can issue this order too? Is that all the influence you have over anything on your own? Aren't you the head of the police station here? Uh of course, I am. And of course, I'm able to make my own decisions. But I can't. Not because of those in Madrid. Uh, they shouldn't always be interfering with our business. Well, then who could give such an order? Uh, <clears throat> Ask Mr. Alonso. If I get an order signed by Mr. Alonso, I don't mind. You can go in and talk to the suspect. Where does this Mr. Alonso live? The Garcia de la Rica Palace is on the main square. You can't miss it. But if you only intend to stay a few days, Professor, then you are unlikely to have any success. As far as I know, today Mr. Alonso has gone with his son to his relatives for a week. And even the housekeeper was released on holiday. Only that cold-blooded butler stays in the house on such occasions. Maybe it is still worth a try. Thank you for your help, Sergeant Reyoyos. I am really grateful to you. No problem, Professor. Just come any time you want to know something. I know about everything. And if you need accommodation, my uncle's hotel is in the name... Thank you again, Mr. Reyoyos. See you, Professor.
good afternoon. Can I help you? Good afternoon. I am looking for Mr. Alonso Garcia de la Rica. Please announce my arrival. I am Professor Hunt from London. I'm sorry, sir. I can't. You can't? And why? It is absolutely necessary I talk to him. I'm sorry, but Mr. Garcia de la Rica is not in. Oh. So he has truly departed. So you already know. Well, he has already departed with his son. And... and when do they return from the trip? I'm expecting them next Wednesday, sir. Please, come back next week. Goodbye. Please wait. Maybe you could help me. Really? Uh, Hugo. Just call me Hugo. Thank you, Hugo. What can I help you with? I need help in a delicate matter. I'm at your disposal. You must have heard that the young Francisco Candelas was imprisoned on charges of theft. Naturally, I have. A very sad case. May I ask you what you think of it? Look, I'm not in the habit of stating my opinion. And then, Professor, if I am right, you are not an investigator or someone like that. And I have stated everything I know into Rayoyo's record book. I see. You are immensely loyal to your master. Well, thank you, Hugo. I don't think you can help. Wait! You must really understand why I am distrustful. I can't have known which side you are on, Professor. Now, something tells me that you are asking for help from me to have the Candelas boy acquitted. Well, uh... Because I have to admit that I am really sorry about all that happened. And I don't believe at all that that nice boy is a thief. I would be glad to help if I can. I don't know if you can, but you could try. As a first step towards getting Francisco out, it is essential that I talk to him to get the details from him. However, the police sergeant won't let me near him unless Mr. Garcia de la Rica releases an authorization for me. I would be grateful if you pressured the master of the house in a telegram to do so. I see. Well, it is absolutely impossible. I have no idea where and how that telegram would reach him. But uh, there may be another solution. But of course, I would be risking my job. As I have mentioned, I would be grateful. Uh, I can very convincingly forge Alonso Garcia de la Rica's signature. Great. Would you do it? I think so, yes. I'm not saying it doesn't bother me that such a treasure can be stolen from this house just like that, but to condemn an innocent boy just because someone must be made a scapegoat, deep inside my sense of justice protests. Though I had thought that this ability had long ago died in me, being in this position. You are a decent man, Hugo, and in gratitude... Please, don't give me any money, Professor. But you could help me to make money. I can promise that. How can I help, then? I have a stamp. My brother, who lives in France and is an experienced stamp collector, says that it is not a worthless specimen. But for me, it is, as long as it is a stamp. Where could I sell it for you? There is an antique dealer nearby, a certain Pablo Arriaga. Around the middle of Calais de Aranjuez. He is the only one in the area who also deals in stamps. But why don't you do it, Hugo? The reason is simple, Professor. The origin of the stamp is doubtful, so to say. And then, such a dealer, besides being a potential spy, can easily cheat a simple butler like myself. But not an English traveler. You understand me, Professor, don't you? I understand. How much is this stamp worth? According to my brother, it is worth at least 1,600 pesetas. But you know what? If you get 1,500 out of that dealer, I'd be happy. He wouldn't give me more than 1,000, that's for sure. Will you do it for me? Of course I will. May I ask you what kind of stamp this is, and where it comes from? You know, I don't want to get into any trouble. Don't worry, Professor. There's no danger here. 
I discovered a book for myself when I was cleaning the library that contained an envelope. An empty envelope folded in which the stamp lay unused, but nothing else. Some writing? A letter? Message? No, nothing. Maybe somebody wanted to post the book itself to a distant friend, because it would have fit in the envelope. And then there's a second copy of the book in the library. Hmm, interesting. Do you have any idea whose book that might have been? One thing is sure. It's not Mr. Alonso's. He does not read books on wine production. It must certainly be his father-in-law's, who gave his old library to the son-in-law upon the marriage of the late Mrs. Alma Garcia de la Rica. The bookshelves looked handsome in the brand new palace. Mr. Rosel Martinio was a lord, and he was interested in a famous vineyard region. But the book and the stamp, judging from their age, could also have been his father's. Why? How old is that stamp? It comes from 1854, so it is exactly 50 years old. According to my brother, it is a rarity because of its color. A stamp with the value of one real with a coat of arms. Very few of them were made in light blue. The normal version may be worth perhaps 50 to 60 pesetas. But this one here is a small fortune. Aha, uh -huh. now I understand. Thank you for telling me. Hugo, could I have that book too, together with the stamp? You said there was a duplicate. Maybe no one will miss it if I take it. Why not, Professor? I have never seen Mr. Alonso take down a single book off the shelves. What is more, I found this one behind a row of books when I was doing the cleaning. I'll find it by the time you're back. But are you interested in wine production in Spain, Professor? Who knows, my friend? Who knows? It is a beautiful sword indeed, but I was never particularly interested in weapons. I don't know much about them either. And I have to say this attitude can be tolerated a lot, even here, in the homeland of the famous Blade of Toledo. Although it is neither very popular nor common. Few people have visited the palace recently, but all regarded the Candela sword highly. More than one offered large sums for it. Mr. Fernandez, a retired general, actually fell in love with it. And Count Hungria, the playboy, and Ariaga, the dealer, both admired it. However, Mr. Alonso would not part with the treasure for any amount of money. A good butler either speaks well of his employer or says nothing at all. Then at least tell me something good about him, Hugo. I can't say much good. You know, everything changed some years ago. Everything ended with the sudden death of Mrs. Alma Garcia de la Rica. The light and comfort left the house forever, just as it left Mr. Alonso's eyes. A promising political career fell apart and friendships fell prey to bitterness. This man is no longer the man he was ten years ago, Professor. He won't speak to anyone except his son. And when he does, he is crude and grumpy. He is feared around Toledo, but he has considerable influence in Madrid as well. It seems his artlessness increases his authority. Francisco is a decent, hard-working young man. He had been working in the house for weeks, making and repairing knobs, putting bars on the windows in the back. He arrived on time every morning, and he left in the evening only after he had finished the day's work. Naturally, Mr. Alonso was irritable with him too, but he was never bothered by this. He always behaved respectfully. Could he see the famous sword? Of course. The sword hung over the landing in a central place and he passed it every day. To tell you the truth, I saw him admiring the sword more than once, even caressing it. Oh, and have you perhaps told this to the police? Unfortunately, yes. But all this was perhaps nothing more on his part than a natural manifestation of resigned attachment. Yes, I know, I, I feel I owe that boy. The old swordsmith? He wasn't a rare visitor to the house earlier. 
Then the friendship stopped when all cheerfulness stopped. The old Candelas brought the sword to Mr. Alonso around then. I never understood his purpose. I don't understand it to this day. Francisco's mother? I don't know her personally. The painter's daughter, if I'm not mistaken. No, I don't remember meeting her. But she is said to be a very pretty woman. The young Aurinho has been referring to her lately as his future bride. Well, I don't envy such a vain guy's future bride at all. The painter was a great man. May he rest in peace. Traveled around the world, a person of European thinking. Not like some of the backward characters here in the area. He had a good understanding of and was interested in everything. Be it painting, music, photography, history, politics, sports. He used to be a regular visitor in our house some time ago. And I had the good fortune of having longer conversations with him in the garden several times. Mr. Diaz Palencia highly appreciated the garden, which is under my care. Thank God I have little business with the police. But I wouldn't have much to talk about with this Rayoyos. <laughs> I consider him a rude man. Fortunately, nothing much happens in this neighborhood. Not enough for us to require a sharp and commanding policeman. Innocent character. Although, I used to be uneasy about him. Mr. Alonso happened to say once that one had to be careful with people like him because they are usually recruited to become spies. They see everything and know everything. But I have known Domingo too long to believe it. May I ask what a French butler is doing serving a Spanish master? Well, it is a long and unpleasant story. Please, don't ask me about it. Something tells me you weren't planning on this profession when you were young. Come, is there anyone who plans on being a butler? But you are right. I used to be on the other side of things at home for a long time, so to say. Then something happened. I'm doing penance, Professor. Yeah, it should be enough now. I only dare to say so much because on the one hand, you are a stranger. On the other hand, we have become accomplices. Do you understand me? Of course. And you can count on my secrecy. Thank you for your help, Hugo. I'll be back soon. I'll be waiting for you, Professor. Meanwhile, I'll prepare what you've requested. See you later.